Hi guys and girls and welcome back to Zenith Minis. My name is Greg and this is Hobby Talk, a brand new format where we look at all the news, the rumours, the releases, the previews, the rules, everything really to do with the hobby and have a bit of an open discussion about it. And today is a perfect day to kick off this show because we've had a Depticon last night or uh, early morning for me in the UK. I think it kicked off around about 3am. So I managed to sleep in until about 5 or 6 until I had to wake up check my Facebook and see what the Warhammer community article had to show us. And it had a lot uh, to show us today, so loads of cool stuff to go through. So what we're going to do is look at each of the images previewed in the Warhammer article and have a bit of a discussion about it. I'll let you know what my opinions are, and hopefully in the comments below you'll let me know what your opinions are as well, what are your thoughts about the new releases. So without any further delay, let's get stuck into the images. So we're kicking things off with Forbidden Power. So this is the new expansion to Soul Wars, Age of Sigma, and these are endless spells. So when they teased this, I think it was like an underground tomb opening up uh, in an animation uh, in a jungle area. I thought it was maybe lizard men, you know, new stuff coming up for them, or maybe even a Tomb King sort of preview. So maybe there is more coming to it. It does say that there's going to be more stuff going on with the Soul Wars now, so hopefully these endless spells is just the start of a load of new models coming out. I'm a Night Haunt player myself, so um, maybe some new Night Haunt will slip in. I mean, there's definitely be more and more Stormcast coming out, so fingers crossed. I mean, I know we've had a lot of new releases so far, so it's a bit greedy for me to, to ask for, for more, but uh, Tomb Kings would be great as well, and some Lizard Men would be, would be awesome too. But let's get stuck into these endless spells, so I'll be bringing up these on screen so we can all have a look at them and the first one is a bit confusing because to me that looks like a terrain piece rather than a endless spell uh, so definitely maybe something to do with astronomy or it resonates more with uh, kind of the traditional stuff we've seen part of age of sigma is all to do with these different realms and space time and all that sort of thing so it doesn't strike me immediately as a spell but maybe it is more of a utility sort of thing like the cogs which fast forward or reverse time um, so maybe it's got some sort of use there and it maybe just stays in place and can't be moved around So it'd be interesting to see what the rule set is is like for that and these next three So we've got the two at the top which again look a bit more like terrain pieces. I'm not too sure what the ruins there uh, are, are all about and the, the thing at the top with the triangles does look like a terrain piece from underworld So maybe there's some sort of link there um, and there's some sort of energy going between the two so yeah, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, what what that what that's all about? Um, but the one at the bottom is awesome. I mean, that's like a rib cage just been split open and flipped upside down, uh, and possessed by some sort of ghost exploding from the ground. So a lot going on there. That's definitely pretty cool. I can imagine that kind of coming out, terrifying a load of units as it charges towards them. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And the last one then is um, the gash almost themed, like definitely death themed. So we've got a um, boat rider guy full of which and boats full of skulls and spines and like a dragon head at the front so definitely um, almost like a Dante level of hell kind of boatman type deal or I think it was like Greek mythology or something like that where you've got the the guy who takes you down that lake into into Hades or into, into hell so it's definitely got that sort of theme about it and that looks pretty cool so you can imagine that kind of slowly moving towards your opposing uh, army ready to, to take some souls to, to the underworld and then we got like a Nagash almost themed headdress at the bottom with some sort of spiritual energy coming out from below so that looks pretty cool as well so maybe that's some sort of like you're summoning a portion of Nagash's energy into the uh, mortal realms ready to, to take some souls back to him or, or collect some souls for him so I'm not really up to date with the Age of Sigma lore as much as I was with the old world so I'm still kind of working my way way through that but yeah they look pretty awesome I mean there's some pretty cool looking spells in there and others which look a bit more like terrain pieces but be worth looking to see what the rules are for that so next up is the reveal of the fire slayer battle tome so I used to love the slayers in the old world especially like the Gotrek and Felix novels I'm not really too up to date on what the slayers are doing at the moment whether they're still trying to atone for some sort of sin or crime whether they're still aiming to die in the glory of battle but we've got some new endless spells for those guys we've got this molten giant salamander lizard thing <laughs> which i think does fit the theme of the fire slayers i've seen the model with the little dude riding that giant big lizard so definitely thematic and a lot of energy in that burst out of the ground ready to attack its uh, foes 
Next up then, probably my favourite of the two, is this dwarven looking forge and it does look pretty damn awesome. Even if you're just using it as a terrain piece, that's pretty cool. I think I would uh, use that, or at least want to use that if I was a, a dwarf player. But I imagine that the magic side of it comes from the properties it's given out. Maybe it's like a buff or an aura to like damage weapons, uh, sorry, increase the damage to the weapons, or maybe the accuracy. Like you have to forge your weapon and go to it. I'm, I'm not too sure what that's going to be, but I hope the rules uh, really live up to the, the visuals of this, this piece and also the points make it worthwhile taking in your army because it does look pretty awesome. Uh, next up then, we've got Warhammer Underworld. So I've been really looking forward to seeing what these models look like. I think it's the Sylvaneth. Uh, they did that preview. It wasn't sold on any, well, I wouldn't say any, but majority of those models, I felt the poses were quite stiff very almost like monoposy, not not really a variety of unit types either, they all kind of look the same. So, I mean, with the Sylvaneth, you've got like the Branch Wraith, I think, or the Branch Witch, um, you've got some Revenants, and there's a lot of options, the Kurinoth Hunters, I'm not very good at pronunciations, but you had a lot of different options, you ended up with the unit, really, of pretty much all the same sort of looking models, and there wasn't even too much variety, including maybe some female representation there, which would really suit that kind of aesthetic and, and I guess the army in general but they do have a good blend or they should have a good blend of like male and female and I don't know I wasn't sold but these guys have redeemed <laughs> that preview they all look pretty damn awesome we got the balloon man right at the center with the harpoon so these guys ride big ships through the air kind of like um big sort of oh God, I can't even remember the name of them but the balloon ships that ride through the air like airships we're gonna call them airships uh, so they got a bit of kind of nautical theme to them a bit of pirate sort of uh, aesthetics as well and they look they look great I, I do like every single model here because they've all got a unique feel to them we got as I mentioned balloon guy with the harpoons floating above the rest of the unit then we've got like the guy on the right who's got like a flamer looking Thing, so hopefully there'll be rules to reflect how that gets used hopefully unique to this this unit and this warband as well then we've got like a minigun looking guy a pirate a swashbuckler <laughs> looking dude with a, uh, a, a sort of a, a sword and a pistol and then we've got like a, a blunderbuss guy on the far left so each model uh, is pretty unique um which which is what i want really from the warbands i don't really want warbands where you can get the models confused or they all kind of look the same. I do like the uniqueness uh, that that is available. So these guys definitely, definitely are, are going to be a unit, uh, a warband that I'm going to be picking up for Underworlds and hopefully their rules and cards will make them at least a contender in the competitive scene as well. So now we have got Warcry. So when they first previewed this, I was hoping it was going to be like Mordheim. <laughs> I, I loved the look of Mordheim back when I was a player in the 90s. I think I got some of the Skaven models, but it was great because every sort of warband you had for Mordheim fit the environment of that ruined town, that ruined city, and they were unique to the main fantasy armies. So it made you, or at least give you a bit of an incentive to, to collect some of those models that were specific to Mordheim. So when I saw Warcry and I'd been looking at some of the Warhammer skirmish rules that they published in White Dwarf, I was hoping it wasn't just going to be a case of new rules and all your kind of armies just kind of slotted into that new game format or at least a, a more official version of Warhammer skirmish. So it's great to see that they've adopted the kill team route but also taken inspiration from Warhammer Underworlds where each of these warbands, at least every warband I've seen previewed so far, in the Warcry uh, teasers has been unique to Warcry. So these guys are the Chaos um, chaos dudes from the realm of metal. <laughs> and they look pretty metal. I mean, they're covered in it for one. But they do have like a nautical theme to them as well. So they look like kind of those all day sort of divers with those helms. And even their skin looks like it's decomposing a little bit from maybe too much time in the water. So a bit like the Deepkin where their flesh is quite pale and uh, bluish almost um, these guys sort of fit that theme um, a bit more than just traditional chaos which is great because they stand out from the main sort of chaos lines so if we work through these images we've got guys with hammers we've got a guy with a shield as well with all kind of metal hanging down from him so each model so far looks unique on its own and ties into the overall theme as well so 
good variety of poses and good variety of weapons as well. Then we get to the interesting bit where we've got this big guy who looks like he's straight from an aggressive game of Blood Bowl. <laughs> uh, so he's got these sort of weapons fixated or sort of moulded into his arm so they're part of him. But more interestingly we've got what looks like a Chaos Dwarf with a beard of chainmail uh, dangling from his face or at least lo looks like medallions or something all sort of joined together and he's wielding two hammers so definitely reminds me of almost like a chaos slayer or something like that i remember the chaos dwarves from back in the 90s never owned any we used to love the metal sculpt so maybe this is a comeback for him at uh, the chaos dwarves or, or or maybe it's just a homage to them like uh, the squats were to necromunda like i'm not too sure if squats are going to make a comeback not too sure if chaos dwarves make a comeback but it's just nice to be reminded that they still exist in the universe so as well as those chaos models they've also shown some of these uh, demon looking things <laughs> so we've got this imp demon creature uh, definitely looks like it's come straight from hell rather than some sort of chaos realm uh, it, it is very relatable i guess to, to some of the films i'm into i love like the the conjuring films and insidious and annabelle any of those sort of demonic supernatural sort of films and this look like it looks like it's come straight from one of those movies but it also fits really well into the current range of of demons but it does stand out on its own those wings look very much kind of like the daughters of cain wings i think we've got the flying ones or maybe drukari dark elder and the body is more ambitious not as muscly as a blood letter uh, so i don't know it, it, it does sort of stand out on its own but i really do love this model and the next one is pretty cool as well it's like a weird bird sort of dinosaur and these remind me of the crows from bloodborne in, in a way uh, you've got these sort of crows which kind of limp across the ground or shuffle and, and then just kind of explode into action when you come near them and uh this does remind me of those so if you could run the imps and those chaos things maybe and this bird raptor looking creature together it definitely means i'll be buying into this this game format uh, so that's war cry subs everything revealed from that really enjoy everything that they've shown and yeah just take my money please <laughs> I'm going to split this video so hopefully that's easier for you guys and that's just to keep the runtime down. But if you want to take a look at all the SNES previews then just check out part 2.